Episode 4 of Prehistoric Planet is now out, titled Ice Worlds. So it begins following some unnamed dromaeosaurs as they hunt young hadrosaurs. They don't say. I assume they're in Montasaurus, based on the design and size of them. The pack hunting is shown to be more coordinated here, which I'm not a big fan of, just because I know it's very case-by-case -case scenario on whether theropod dinosaurs hunted in packs. The problem is, is that it's always depicted that, yes, theropods without a doubt hunted in packs and they had these very complex social structures that allowed them to plan out their hunting styles and techniques and plans. The problem is, is there's not a ton of evidence supporting this so a lot of this is speculation and it's kind of one of those things that's just with taken at face value and just assumed without a whole lot of evidence to back it up. Kind of going back to the previous episode Freshwater which I didn't really mention it in that review but that is probably one of the best segments is the Velociraptors hunting on the cliff. Uh, it was just cool to see them depicted that way. But the pack hunting in there, it is shown to be a little more coordinated, but on the same hand, the moment the female has a chance to just run off with the prize, she just leaves the two males to fend for themselves. So it's not like it's we ride and die together. It's a lot more like Komodo dragons, but a little more coordinated in that sense, which I think that's a little more acceptable because it's not just like wolves or lions it's a lot more free for all but let's take advantage to kind of maybe so we can all gain some resources from this and at least they didn't show them trying to hunt one of the adult and montasauruses they just more chase them into the river and because of that one of the babies dies and they're able to feed on that which i think that's fine but even then it's still kind of depicts them as more coordinated pack hunters. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's still not terrible. It's not done in the way that, say, you have them taking on a full-grown Edmontosaurus. That would be like a couple wild dogs taking on an elephant. That's just not possible. The next one is Ornithomimus nests, and I really like this one. It's showing uh, similar behavior to a lot of different bird species where the males will make nests out of materials and then the females come and pick the males with the best nests and nest sites. And it's really cool to see this kind of behavior. That's one of the one things I just really love about this documentary series so far is that they show the more calm, relaxing behavior of animals and it's not just fighting violence, blah, roar, blood, gore, Jurassic Fight Club. So I really appreciate it from this documentary, and it's kind of funny seeing the Ornithomimus trying to steal materials from other nests. I mean, I know penguins do it sometimes. They'll steal rocks from other nests, nest sites in order to make it for their own. So it's kind of funny seeing the ornith Ornithomimus like, oh, is he looking? Uh, uh, uh. Is he looking? Nope. Okay. And then when he gets caught, but so I think that was solid. The next segment is Orlo... <laughs> Oloro... Oloro Titan, Orlo, Orla Titan. Ugh, I'm not good at reading dinosaur names when I have it written on the text. It's it's these ones that you're seeing on screen now. But I really like that the babies aren't just scaled down versions of the adults. They look like underdeveloped versions of the adults, which is what most babies look like. You don't look at a human baby and be like, yeah, it looks just like me, but little. One thing that I didn't really like this might just be my dark sadistic side popping out but in this segment it depicts mosquitoes and just swarms of mosquitoes that are so numerous that they could actually kill the small babies because they could just take so much blood and just have swarms of them the thing is is that it shows one baby like falling down and like it's just kind of laying there as mosquitoes are like swarming it and sucking its blood and stuff and not in the sense of like bees just that there's just so many of them that and you're so little that even them taking a little bit of blood, comparatively, is a lot for your size versus the adult where it doesn't affect them as much. But it shows one of the babies lying down and assume... I thought they were going to have the balls to not... You don't have to see the baby die on screen, but they I assumed that it was implied that the baby died from a lack of blood. But then after David Attenborough says only one out of 10 babies will make it to adult size. It shows that baby climb up this giant hill and get to the top of it, which, you know, I guess it is possible. Reminds me of the one uh, documentary se segment from Planet Earth 2, 
worse to the baby marine iguanas running from the hundreds of snakes that are chasing them so it is possible but on the same hand it felt like they were just kind of doing a bait and switch like oh no the baby's gonna die but nope not actually the next segment involves a troodontid they don't say it again i don't know the whole history behind troodon and whether it's a real dinosaur as far as i know it was a premature assumption on if it was actually a discovered species or not based on a single tooth which seems very unprofessional in that sense that you find one fossil piece and assume oh yeah it's a brand new species so i know that's been kind of called out and stuff so here they just say troodontid i guess to kind of keep it vague and they say that you know the stuff that most documentaries talk about with troodontids or in the past when they would say troodons talk about how it's the smartest animal or not the smartest animal, how they t they talk about how it's the smartest dinosaur which makes sense because as far as I know, the, this dinosaur, whatever it may be, there's strong evidence to suggest that it had a large brain, but on the same hand, they depict it hunting by fires, which is something that real animals do sometimes. I know the Malibu storks, they'll find for fires in Africa, and then they'll snatch up small animals and insects that fly away from the to get away from the fire, so that's not unreasonable. The part that I find unreasonable is that the troad haunted looks at a burning twig, is able to put together that this thing burns, grabs it, runs it around, and then drops it down in another place to start a fire there. So this documentary depicts arsonist troodons, or di <laughs> dinosaur arsonists, if you will, which, again, it's not impossible, but I find it very unrealistic or highly unlikely. But you never know. I mean, animals are pretty smart, but I don't know how smart troodontids were especially compared to modern days i could maybe buy like a primate or even a porpoise or whale uh, doing something to a certain extent using a tool to bait out other animals or something like that but this it just felt kind of a little too speculative which usually i don't mind when it comes to a lot of body parts and even certain behaviors but to this it felt a little weird <laughs> The next one is an Artopelta, which is a type of ankylosaur from the documentary. Nothing really stuck out to me about this segment. I thought it was fine. The only thing that really stuck out to me, I guess, was one shot of a cave with glowing uh, fungus gnat larvae. That just looked super cool. So that's probably the only notable thing for, for um, me that really stuck out to me from that segment. And now the final segment is the Pachyrhinosaurs and Anuxosaurus hunting them. So I really like this segment, Pachyrhinosaurus, Pachyrhinosaurus, sorry. I'm turning to David Attenborough, or Dar Dinosaur Documents, where he just referred to the Tyrannosaur, Dromaeosaur, so they don't actually have to name the actual species. But Pachyrhinosaurus is my favorite herbivorous dinosaur, and probably my second favorite dinosaur of all time, so seeing it's always a treat. I did think of, I think this is just kind of a given, but the Walking with Dinosaurs movie, uh, the one where they won't shut up, that one. I know it's kind of a common thing to show Pachyrhinosaurus and Nanunxosaurus or Gorgosaurus or Albertosaurus always interacting with each other in kind of a wolf, bison, or muxox kind of relationship, which I think, you know, is fine. But it is the one thing that we usually always see. But I did really like this segment actually really did like the entire segment. It's always cool to me to see these dinosaurs that are usually depicted in warm tropical climates show them in these snowy biomes. It's always, I like seeing the unique aspect of it and something that we're not usually seen in dinosaur media to see them in the snow and stuff. That's one of the things I guess I'm kind of excited for, quotation marks, quotation marks excited for for Jurassic World Dominion is the snow biomes, but honestly, that's not really gonna excuse it for its most likely poor story. But you know, I don't know. I could be proven wrong. It's not like we have a track record of these things. I actually really did like this episode overall. I liked it more than the last one. This one narratively felt a lot more cohesive instead of going from like two minutes with this dinosaur, all right, next segment, two minutes with this dinosaur, next segment, and so on. This one felt like it could take its time with each segment and even kind of connecting them back all together, which I really liked. It kind of reminded me of the desert one and even the ocean one or coasts episode. So I really like that in that sense where they feel like they're more connected with maybe like one or two segments, but honestly, that's fine. I like seeing them a lot more connected. 
personally, but that's just my preference in terms of uh, narratives through documentaries. I still don't mind the whole segment, move on, segment, move on. But some people do like that for their documentary. So really, I guess it's just personal preference on how, whether you will like this episode or not. But overall, I really enjoyed this episode. Always great to see Pachyrhinosaurus again. Much better than that horrendous version in The Amazing Dinosaur World where they put too much emphasis on the rhino portion of it. But overall, I enjoyed this episode. I personally would probably rank it number... I think I would rank it number two. So it, for me so far, it would probably go desert, ice world, coasts, freshwater. And even though freshwater is probably my least favorite, I still think it's a solid seven out of 10. So I'm curious on what your guys' personal rankings are so far. We have one more episode coming out tomorrow. So we'll kind of see how forests ties in all the different aspects. If the rumored Therizinosaurus will appear in that one. And with that, I'll leave you all have a good day. And I'll see you later. Stay safe out there.